Early on, as we get introduced to framing and composition, one of the first things we stumble across is the so-called rule of thirds. By now it is well known far beyond photography and filmography, since every phone camera has a thirds grid and basically any device with a camera has it for you to use while taking a photo or shooting a video clip. With such a great presence, one wouldn't even question the validity and reliability of this method. To be completely honest, I've been using this so-called rule myself at the beginning of my photographic journey. But unfortunately, many misunderstand this controversial advice. If you accept it as a rock-solid basis for your composition, you're in a great risk of getting stuck with your photography or drawings or painting or potentially any other kind of visual art. Today I'm gonna prove it to you and also tell where did it come from, why it's misleading and when to avoid it. My name is Sergio and today's topic is the well-known rule of thirds. For starters, let me tell you what does it even mean. If you draw imaginary lines to divide a picture into three rows and three columns, that's gonna create two thirds. Surprisingly, there's even no clear definition of how to follow it. According to some, your point of interest should be at the intersection of those grid lines. Some say it should be right on these lines, while others uh, say that it should be slightly off the grid lines. This is already confusing and very generalistic, but I'll explain to you why it is so later. The general perception is that if you follow this rule, your images will be more interesting, appealing to the eye and better composed. But I'm gonna debunk all of that shortly, so stay with me. To better understand the rule of thirds, let's first dive into its origins. The name rule of thirds first appears in the book Remarks on Rural Scenery by John Thomas Smith. Published in 1797, he wasn't talking about photography, obviously, but about painting. And this is where the strongest argument in favor of rule of thirds comes from, that because many famous artists and painters use this rule in their works, it's legit to use it in your photography, even more, you have to use it, otherwise your photos will be boring or poorly composed. But looking at the quality of works of John Smith and the lack of his personal story and paintings online only concludes that he's actually a failed artist. I know, it's cool but it's true. So why would we listen to the advice of the mediocre painter? He argues that purely from his experience, artists used this rule to create stunning paintings, but you and I know that it isn't just as simple as that. By now we know that the greatest masters became such because through the years of work and practice, they developed and used such composition techniques as golden section, figure ground relationship, arabesque, dynamic symmetry, gamut, ellipses, radiating lines, coincidences, enclosures, and more. And don't you think for a second that Van Gogh or Da Vinci simply used the grid of thirds as a sufficient composition rule? Another version of the origins of the rule of thirds comes from Bruce Barnbaum in his book The Art of Photography. He tells the story of a statistician in the mid-1850s who was trying to establish what made great paintings great. Without having any art background, red flag, he collaborated with some art historians and critics to examine some of the finest paintings out there to find out statistically what was the best place to put the point of interest in a painting. He figured that dividing the painting into quadrants wouldn't be sufficient because on average the points of interest would always land around the intersection, so instead he chose the thirds. And obviously he came up with the conclusion that started the rule of thirds, since the results showed that the points of interest are mainly placed on or nearby the grid intersections. Unfortunately, his method sucked big time because division into thirds had the same flaw as division into quadrants. After all, it is visual art and not a mathematical model where each possibility is counted. In both paintings and uh, photography, you obviously wouldn't place anything important too close to the top, bottom or sides. As a result, your points of interest would be concentrated in the middle section where, as uh, you've guessed by now, the thirds grid intersections are. In the end, these results cannot be taken seriously, not to mention becoming a rule. Nevertheless, there was a very recent study with the same goal in mind, but with modern approach and computerized methods. In 2014, a research paper was published in one of the German universities called Evaluating the Rule of Thirds in Photographs and Paintings. They got hundreds of photographs and paintings analyzed, and uh, thanks to computer programs, they created a heat map of the interest points to see any patterns. This is what the heat map of a photograph or painting looks like. 
The hotter the color temperature represents more visual interest area or point. They've compiled huge amount of different heat maps uh, together to visualize the average placement of interest points. Let's look at them closer. Here is the heat map of photographs that did not follow the rule of thirds. And here is the heat map of the photographs that followed the rule. See anything different? How about this? Here's the heat map of photographs that were taken almost randomly. About the same, right? And no obvious pattern difference. Even more, here is the heat map of professional photographs. And here's the one of over 700 paintings. If you put them all together, we come to the same conclusion I told you before. It's just logical that the main interest points always fall uh, roughly into the central area of the picture, uh, avoiding the far corners. The study draws the same conclusion. Our findings suggest that the rule of thirds might not be as important as previously assumed. We can only speculate why the rule of thirds plays such an important role in textbooks on photography and art. They also say that as artists gain intuitive expertise in artistic composition, they may drop the rule, which might be a reason why we did not find it in high-quality photographs and artworks. So, to sum it up, rule of thirds is merely an advice for those starting in art because something is better than nothing. Sticking to the thirds grid simply helps you to balance the image in an easy and apprehensible way. Like Ken Rockwell says on his website, Art doesn't subscribe to analysis. It can't be created by applying formulas or ratios or rules. There is no rule of thirds. Applying these old wives' tales allows one to rise quickly to a basic level of camera club mediocrity, but one gets stuck at that mediocre level once all the rules have been followed and there's nowhere else to go. And adding my five cents here, I must say that it is quite deceiving to say that the rule of thirds leads to a better composition. Composition itself is not just where you decide to put your subject in the frame. It also includes the lens you use, the angle you choose, the light, the color, the patterns, the lines, the contrast. It is a whole combination of different factors rather than a simple grid decision. In other words, take all the photography rules with a grain of salt, especially the rule of thirds. Avoid unnecessary restrictions to develop your skills, photographic style, and artistic vision. I hope you enjoyed this episode and learned something new. Now go out and shoot a bunch of great photos. Like this video, subscribe, and until the next one, bye!